you and praise God for letting us, letting us together one more time. Again, we want to thank you for the answer to Chapman and St. Stephen for Friday Sunday School together this morning. At this time, we're going to ask Mother Bond to lead us in a song and our Minister Payson to lead us in prayer. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Daily walking close to thee. Oh, my Lord, I bitch the last. Get granny, Jesus, if you please. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my fever life is old, time for me will be no more. Guide me safe, gently safe, me to the shore, kick the Lord to the shore, just a close to walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be. The Lord, let it be. Sorry I made a mess, but I did my best. <laughs> all right. Father God, first of all, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord, for you giving us the opportunity to come into your presence, Father, this time, Father, to study this Sunday school lesson. I'm asking you, Lord, that you touch the Sunday school teacher, Lord, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and knowing her first, Lord, from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Lord, down in your so house for wisdom and knowledge, Father, when she come forth, use her for your glory, and open up our spiritual ears, Lord, so we can understand the Sunday school lesson this morning, Lord. We want to thank you, God, for keeping us all through the night, Lord, from all hurt, harm, and danger, bless sick everywhere, and red homes and hearts, covers everywhere, all those lying on the dead of affliction, Father. This prayer I lay before thee this morning, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 We want to thank Brother Bob for the uh, song and our minister Payson for the prayer. At this time, we're going to turn the lesson over to uh, Trey T. Wu. Trey T. Wu. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. I'm here, Lord. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, our lesson for today is from the book of Isaiah, of the 58th chapter, verses 6 to 10. And the subject is living right over empty rituals. And, and the lesson for today tells us that no matter how many religious deeds, how many religious acts we do, if the heart is not pure, it's just empty. And God cares more about a person's sincere prayer than performing a ceremony. Uh, as it starts out with uh, verse 6, it says, the kind of fast I want is that you stop oppressing those who work for you and treat them fairly and give them what they earn. He said, I'm looking for the kind of fast that will break the chains of injustice. Get rid of unfair treatment in the workplace. So I was just free the oppressed and cancel that debt. That's the kind of fast he said I'm looking for. He said, I want you to share your food with the hungry, invite the homeless poor into your home, close those who are cold, and don't hide from relatives who need your help. He said, uh, if you do these things, the prophet tells us, if you do these things, God will shed his own glorious light upon you. 
He will heal you. Uh, uh, your righteousness shall pave the way, and goodness will be a shield before you, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. He said, now, when, when you call the Lord, he will answer. And when you call out for help, he'll say, I'm here. And all you need to do is to stop oppressing the weak. Stop making false accusations and spreading rumors. And then he said in verse 10, he said, feed the hungry. Help those in trouble. So then your light will shine out from the darkness. And the darkness around you shall be bright as day. And as we look at this lesson, you know, if you go back up and start at the beginning and reading uh, in this chapter, and, and um, God tells the prophet that just shout out aloud, to just like a trumpet, tell the people of their sin. Say it loud. And tell them about their sin. He said, uh, so they act so uh, uh they act so holy and they come to the temple every day. They like hearing the reading of my law. So they act just like they're gonna obey them and they know they're not. <clears throat> he said they love the temple services. They love to go through the emotions, but they will not their heart is not in it, their heart is not right. And then God says that uh uh he, he says to him that um, you say that you you tell me, God, why not you? Why are you not listening to us? He said, they say to me, we have fasted before you. Why are you not impressed with us? He said, why you don't see our sacrifice? Why don't you hear our prayer? God said, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because you're living in evil places even while you are fasting. And you keep right on oppressing your weak, your workers. God was telling them, say, now, look, I don't care how much you pray. Don't care how much you pray. But unless you get the heart right, you're just wasting your time. Because I don't hear you. And I will not hear you until you get it right. He said, he said you have... You're living in evil pleasures, even while you're fasting. And you keep right on oppressing the workers. And he said, look, what good is fasting when you keep on arguing and quarreling? He said, this kind of fast will never get you anywhere with me. He said, this is, this is not the kind of fast I want. This is a performance that you're doing. It's not a fast. It's not for me. And then as we as we look more at the lesson, it says, we who are the faith, we have a social responsibility too. And, and just like a personal responsibility. You know, we live in communities among other people. And and, and our faith requires that requires us to live out the meaning of faith in our lives in ways that make the community better. The, we as believers, we're responsible for some of the stuff that goes on in the community. We're responsible to help it move, help it move smooth, help everybody come along. Not just the few ahead and leave the needy behind. No, that's not the way that he wants it to be. And, and see, he wanted Israel, Israel was gonna be, gonna be different from the other nations. All the other nations of the world. And, and, and they were gonna show the world they were going to be an example. They were going to show the world how you're supposed to live. They were supposed to show it, show the world that uh, it's possible to live in a way where the powerful do not take advantage of the powerless. And this is what God wanted Israel to be this example. So now I want you to, you know, I keep molding you. I keep working with you. I want you to be a model citizen a modern nation, and all the other nations will look at you, and they will see light. They will see justice. They will see righteousness. Then you're going to be one, and others be coming to you. You're going to be like a lighthouse. You'll be like a lighthouse, and this is why I want you to get it together and stop playing with me. And it says, other nations will look up and say, look how Israel's doing. 
we want to be like Israel. They would, you would draw others to you, and then you can tell them about the goodness of God and what God has done for you as a nation. And see, God's vision for Israel was that the powerful are to use their power to protect the weak and to ensure that the weak and those in need benefit from the grace, benefit from the um, from the grace of God that's shown in the community. And and, and they were supposed those the, the halves were supposed to look out for the have not, but they weren't doing it. The halves were taking advantage of the have not, and that is and it's doing a lot of that today. And it says. And he told me, he said, the poor are not to be looked at as outsiders. And he telling you, when you look at these people, you're talking about those people, or them, them over there, whatever. I, that's not the way. They are part of God's people, too. Part of God's name. Mm-hmm. And you don't say those people over there are the outsiders. No, no, no. Because that is all, everybody belongs to God. Mm-hmm. And, and and they say that you don't look at them as outsider or less than. And they too are the people of God. When the nation honor God, then it can experience the blessing of God that are not limited to a select few, but are provided for all. And as long as we live in this world, there are going to be some haves and there are going to be some have not. And it looks like the power structure is to a point where their wealth is, is a few people seems to be prospering, and many are falling through the crack. But somehow or another, the powerful or the ones that appear to be prospering don't seem to see the ones that are falling through the crack. And that's what God is saying. He wants us to do that. Don't when you get up the hill, reach back and pull your brother or your sister one up the hill. Don't mm-hmm. just get up. Don't just get up the hill and strut on away and not look back. And he was telling how these people, when they came back from exile, when the, when the king, the new king Cyrus took over, he let some of them come back and start rebuilding the city. Well, it says that when they got back, they hadn't been back long before they started the same old thing. Mistreating, the separation, they, the classes they made. They put some in this class and some in that class, and some consider themselves the upper class. But they started back doing the same thing that they were doing when they were captivity. And and and, and uh, the research in the lesson say uh, when you, God wants them to feed the hungry, so they forgot when they were in captivity, some of them was hungry. They you know they know how they were treated when they was in captivity. He said. It, you have mercy on your God and, and had mercy on you. Now you have mercy on your brother. Mm-hmm. And he says, that is not the way that you should be. I want you to change. I want you to be a model nation. And, and, and in order to be that, you're going to have to change. He said, I want peace there. That the peace that God wanted to give Israel, it was conditional. It was based upon the acts of justice. It said, now if Israel do their part, then God will respond with a blessing for the nation that will give it peace. Because if there is no justice, there is no peace. And if there is no peace in one place, there is no peace in another place. All over the world, all of us need to come over together. Mm-hmm. If one group goes over and they succeed, they need to reach back for the other one. Instead of not looking back, reach back for the help your sister and brother. Because remember, you were once there in that in that situation. Mm-hmm. And that's what he, uh, uh, the prophet is telling them what God said. That you're not going to have any peace until you at least have some justice. And uh, <clears throat> the the uh, the prophet would tell them, said, "Now uh, I tell you how you're going to get the, the approval of God." So now, religious acts alone will not gain God's approval. There must be a commitment to seeing the needs of the poor. God, God places his interest in the, in the poor to show that 
the poor got somebody talk, speaking for them. You see, mm -hmm. many, many times certain groups got speakers for this and that, but many times the poor has nobody. But God is telling them that he, he's showing that the poor are not without somebody to help them what they call. Yes, and and he, he said, now the poor may not have access to the powerful, but God does. And God mm -hmm. uses the prophet to hold, <clears throat> uses the prophet to hold um, the powerful accountable. He says, now you're going to have to, some things going to have to change. He said, now I want you to be, don't you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Now, you have, I know how some of you were treated here. You went into exile, stayed 70 years. Many of the ones that went had passed on. Said, but now you come back knowing how you fared over there, and you're going to come back and treat these people just like you fared. Said, no, that's not going to work. That is not how I want it to be done. He said, you're going to have to, you're going to have to change your way. And, and the, the, the thing about it, they could come and look like a, mm, they, they love to go, they followed the law, they fasted, they kept the Sabbath holy, kept all the law, but they would not. And, and it looks like to me that if you're going to be like God, then you're going to remember the poor. You're going to look out for the less fortunate. You're not going to be uh, looking down on people. Because you, as far as you, you're going to realize everybody belongs to God. Mm -hmm. God made them all. And God will take us through some stuff. And sometimes the stuff he takes us through, it's like mm, we shouldn't have to go through that. But God has a way of doing just how he does it. That's his business. But he takes us through stuff. And it's on our way to our, our former plan. We go through a lot, just like the, the Israelites. On the way, you would have thought after all they had gone through in each land, they'd come out and it would have been smooth sailing. No, God had to take them through a few things. And he has to take us through some things because all of this is teaching. It's just like what we, as we said before with Joseph. God knew what he had planned for Joseph. But Joseph didn't just have a smooth sailing. They got him out of the pit and sold him to the caravan. They took him to Egypt and he, he worked as a, he was a slave. He worked his way up and when he thought he was doing all right, Pharaoh's wife had him put in prison. So you don't know, and look at all the twists and turns before he finally got to the position that God had in mind. So God had, had him so that when he got to the position, he had already known what it was like to have uh, discipline, he knew what it was like to pray. He knew what it was like to wait on God. He never lost his faith in God. He knew God would be with him. So he takes us through some stuff. When the Israelite had gone to Babylon and had invaded them and taken captive, and, and they were all out there. And But God tells them, now when you come back, you came back to your land. Remember how you fared out there? You was hungry sometimes cold and all and you come back and now you want to treat these people the very same way that those uh, the babylonians treated you said it won't work this is not what i'm looking for and and, and it will not work he said you're going to have to <clears throat> you're going to have to change your tune if you expect uh if you expect my blessing i don't care about all this this fasting you do and everything uh-uh no, no, no. And, and I don't care about that. That doesn't make any difference. The thing I'm talking about is how you treat them. How you treat them. Get your heart right. Search your heart. You know, this is just like when we, um, when we go for communion, uh, it says do it, you know, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance to me. Well, also, a little further to tell you, now, if you're going to come here and do that and you know you ain't right, don't even bother because you're going to do more damage to yourself. Mm -hmm. So we, and so the bottom line is that if we're going to live for God, we got we to walk upright. 
That's right. We ain't gonna be perfect. We gonna make mistakes. So mm. we can't be shady because the thing about it is, God of all people knows the heart. That's right. I can I can say you and I can talk, but I don't really know you. May not know your heart. It, mm. You know, people can talk a good game, and uh, people can play a good game. But then mm -hmm. you don't know anybody really. Sometimes you don't even know you say it. That's right. And so what what we're saying here is he said, you know, just don't bring me this all this fake religion stuff that I don't even want to hear. I don't want to even know about this fake faith. If you don't get it together and, and stop mistreating, oppressing the poor, and you know, and taking advantage of people who cannot help themselves. We have mm -hmm. people all the time, and sometimes they're even in the family. One thing they're a little smaller than the other one. And sometimes they will use that one to do their dirty work. Amen. And so you have to you have to be careful. Ask God for discernment. Because if you don't know anybody, you can be led by by anything or anybody. People can talk a good game. People can talk a good game. And, and God said, telling these, he's telling Israel, said, now, I don't care how good a game you play. I don't care what you say. If you ain't going to get your heart right, don't even bother me. Don't even bother. Because mm -hmm. I, I told you, you got to come, you got to get your heart right. Mm -hmm. said, God said, you know, I'm not even interested in seeing a temple or a city rebuilt that denies justice and oppresses the poor. He said the city and the temple that bear my name are to reflect the values and the vision of me. Mm -hmm. He telling us that no, that we, we don't need to do that. that uh, but I'm telling you, nothing is going to work until we get it right. He said That's sometimes, right. and some of these people had done this for so long, it was hard for them to stop it. Because every time they turn around, you know, they had gotten in the habit of when they when they went to the temple, they they all sit in their places. The poor had to get what was left. Mm -hmm. and, and he's saying, he said, now what you telling me that you love me, and yet you just scorn your brother or your sister sitting mm -hmm. right there with you. He said, no, it's not going to work. If the heart ain't right, don't even bother. That's right. And he, and he says, uh, <clears throat> he says, anything that I'm going to have a thing do with, it's going to be different. Everybody in my say, I love all of you. All of you belong to me. And, mm -hmm. and I love all of you. So I'm giving you power for what a chance to do something about some of this stuff. Because mm -hmm. you're going to have to do it to make it in. Mm -hmm. And he tells them, they act like they just can't seem to, can't seem to quite understand it. And you know, a miracle, our country, you know, often referred to as the office as a godly nation. But when, you know, the many writers that wrote about the history of uh, America says that our founding fathers were persons of faith, maybe so. Prayer is a, is a, it prayer is a part of the opening of Congress each day. But when we look around and we see America leaves a whole lot to be desired, there are more homeless people, there are those without health insurance, and the prison population keeps increasing. Us, more mm -hmm. and more of the nation of wealth is concentrated among a handful of persons. And yet, these people uh, fill their churches every Sunday morning. They are in there. They, they pay their tithes. And they do what the law says. And that's it. But they have no desire, no feeling for the people, the less fortunate. You don't know how they got there. And they could have been like that from their parents. And just couldn't, you know, just born into poverty. But mm -hmm. they, they come along. They, they, they don't pay any attention to the, these people, the downtrodden, and all that stuff. They come there, and they they pay the tithes. They do what the law says do, and they feel like they got God's approval. 
But God said, not so, not so. And, and, and you know, the words of the prophet that have just as much meaning today as it did then. And he he wrote, this was written many, many thousands of years ago. But just guess what? It's applied to us now. Mm-hmm. It applies to us now. And, and he's telling us that, you know, so the works... The, the works of the prophet is that it is as meaning today as it did then. God does not desire spiritual act or ritual worship or religious act. He desires compassion and justice. And we just got to, we just can't, you know, you, you can't continue on. If you don't, if you don't care for someone, if you don't like someone, but think about, is it the person or is it just their ways? And then God, you have to ask God, because see, we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're, we're supposed to be like he was telling Israel. Now, mm-hmm. you're going to be the light on the hill. And, you know, you're going to be be like that lighthouse that will see the point the way. The world is in a lot of dogs. So when we look at that lighthouse, oh, okay. I was lost out here on the street, but now I see a lighthouse. So that's okay. I follow the light, and then I get make it to the city. And and that's what he wants us to be, as well as Israel. He wants us to be a lighthouse, so that somebody will come say, "Wow, okay, I was lost, but now I see how I'm supposed to go. I thank you for showing me the way." And then that person shows another the way. And it keeps going and keeps going until a whole group, a whole community is together. They're praying together. See, he told them, he said, these fasts you talk about. Now, if they've done right, they would help people get saved. They would help people lift the heavy load. Their burdens would li- be lifted off them. If you've done it, people will come to be saved. He said, if the fast is done right. And that's the kind of fast I want. Fast that get results. Not this stuff you talk about. You go to the religious acts and then you think you've done stuff. But you refuse to treat people right. Just like I I do. But but it's not going to work. And and he said, you can't get away with it. I am God. I see everything. I know everything. And I can do everything. And so don't think you're fooling me. You may be fooling some of the people in the temple. Y'all get in your little groups and you act like you're so holy. So but you forget, I know you. I made you and I know you. Mm-hmm. So, so don't ever think that you're fooling me. And so, you know, we each, each of us can examine ourselves and see if our, if our worship is religious act, or does it really magnify? Does it magnify God or does it magnify me? Mm-hmm. He said, don't make no difference. You get up there and you show off and you say, I do this and I do that. But God said, no, no, no. And you see, our lesson is centered on doing doing acts of worship that magnify the Lord and not our faith. Mm-hmm. And we get beat by our loudness. We allow the light and the love of God to be seen by the way we treat other people, the way we mm-hmm. treat other people. Not just yeah. our friends, not not just our church members, and not just our relatives, but all people. Mm-hmm. Some of us, sometimes we treat a certain group of people right, others we won't. But God is saying here, and the community, he wants us to treat all people right. And he wants the powerful, those who are doing good, he wants you to look out for the one that's not going to do. The one that he wants you to see what you can do for them. Can you come by and bring them something? Or would you rather, I didn't come by, just pray for you? Whatever. But he wants us to be concerned. Because uh, until all of us have made those, none of us really will be successful. Because God said you ain't done what I told you to do. Mm-hmm. If you don't, you know, don't even think about a blessing. Don't even think about, oh, you've made it. Because here's the thing about it. He says, all of you belong to me. I know what, you, what you're what capable of. I know all of you. 
Mm -hmm. I want you to look out for, look out the powerful, those who are doing well, look out for the ones that's not doing so well. And he mm -hmm. said, but don't come to church and act like, come up here to the temple and you act so holy and everything because you think that you have got everything done right. So I'm telling you now, back up, back up, and you need to, you need to get on your knees, you need to pray, you need to have some, you need to really have a serious talk with God, ask Him to change you, because where the route you're going is not getting you anywhere. He said, "Ain't no need going to the temple every day, praying, and and, and and praying for somebody to see how oh how holy you are, because you go to that temple and stuff." But now don't even bother. He said, but until you can get it right with me, you need to talk with me first. Get it right. Get your heart right, because you can't continue on like this. Y'all are pressing the poor. You're taking advantage of the people, the poor people that can't help themselves. So there's no need for that. That's not what I told you. I told you that you reach back and help your neighbor. Reach back and help your brother or your sister. And, and instead of doing that, what do you do? You still separate. So have you forgot how you fared when y'all was in exile, when y'all got the Babylonians took y'all to a country? And for 70 years, many died and many of you are newborns. So, but you know how you fared? And you come right back here while we're rebuilding the temple. You come back here, and now you're ready to uh, treat them just like you were treated. Did you learn anything from that? And he said, no. So, the message tells us that God's word is first. His, his word said, first, show me your heart before you worship me. Mm. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you and thank God for letting you be, and thank God for letting you give us that awesome lesson. And like you said, God carried us through some stuff so we could have time to get our mind and our heart right. And and he 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 knows, like you said, he knows us for he ain't made us. He knows what we will do and what we won't do. He knows he God go for the righteous people, not the wicked. You know, he don't want you to be wicked. He wants you to be righteous. Mm -hmm. And be real into what you are doing and saying. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? The lesson was taught very well this morning. Um, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. As we go along, uh huh. So I was just gonna say, God don't want you to give Him lip service. He wants you to be true to whatever you're saying. Because anybody can say anything, but if you're not sincere, God knows it. That's a good thing about it. That's right. Yeah, because he sees it all, he knows it all, he hears it all. Mm-hmm. Well, what, it, like he was telling us, the people in Israel, you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. That's, That's right. right. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed the lessons his name. Thank you so much. I did too. Well, good. I appreciate it. And I'm glad that we are on to a point where we can always enjoy the mess, enjoy each other, enjoy the comments. That's the way God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? Yes, good morning. Uh -huh. um, enjoy the message. Um, the old idea the less I can tolerate. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and I'm really to folks that we are having the same discussions. And my thing is, I know I ain't there yet, but I'm not out here trying to teach folk um, uh, certain things. And I'm just having a problem when folk are trying to teach stuff and they are not living it. And I mm -hmm. think that what people need to do is 
uh, even if it's something I have done, and I, I, I don't, I can't think of anything, but if it is, I want somebody to come to me. Okay. But um, I think what we got to do is we got to learn how to uh, um, hold ourselves accountable because if you can't be true to yourself, you can't be true to others. So it's some things that some folks need to do as such as go to folk and apologize. But some things need to be done publicly because if it was done publicly, it needed to be mm-hmm. done. It, it need, mm-hmm. We need to apologize publicly. Mm-hmm. And, and, and with all that's going on in the world today, how can the children uh, do better when they see what we are doing? Mm-hmm. We just got to get it right. I mean, it, it's not going to get right if we continue to to try to teach and preach and do whatever and, and know we got some things that we need to get right. We need to come clean. And, 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 and like I say, um, um, the older I get, the less I can tolerate. I try to change the way I do things, and um, you know, um, I'm, I'm trying to get there, but it's hard listening to folk that when I know they ain't right, when I know folk around me know they ain't right, they in these positions. We got to start holding people accountable because the world ain't gonna get no better. We keep on down the same path we are going. So if oh, we're God. really going to be true to ourselves. And to the others, we got to start cleaning up some things. It's okay to say, uh, um, I did this, I did that. And, and, and I, and I need to apologize so we can move forward together. Now, I haven't been saying anything the last couple of times, but I've been enjoying your message. And like I said, I've been dealing with stuff because it, it's just tough for me. Um, um, you know, like I said, I see a lot. I go a lot of places. I do a lot of sermons. I do this. I do that. And, 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 you know, it, it's just sad. We, as a black people, got to get it together. We can go to church and, and, and do all these things, but people are watching. And we need to make sure that we get it right. Folk know us. And I just can't sleep at night knowing I've done somebody wrong and, 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 and don't get it right. And like I said, if I do you wrong, uh, on the individual note, I'm going I'm, to I'm apologize there. But if I do you wrong in public, it needs to be done properly. So I appreciate the message and you keep on doing what you do. And, um, you know, it ain't, it ain't about who you are. It's about the message that you bring in. You know, it, it, it ain't no friendship. I ain't a part of no clique or anything. But you bring forth the message. I know you do church. And, and, and see, when, when older people go away, like uh, the like 92-year-old lady yesterday, I know nothing. I have never heard anything bad about her. But like I said, we do things. But it makes me feel good. When, but when these young folks die, and, and, and um, you know, it, it's one thing. But when these older folks go away, it, it kind of tips me. And I know I'm getting there because I just took a six to myself. So, you know, I appreciate you. Keep on doing what you do. And I look forward to your message. Thank you. Amen. I keep, I keep trying to, each time I ask God to help me to try to do better, whatever, you know, that it just, I'm just plain, and that's the way I do my lesson, just plain, hoping that we all can, can get it. Because we at, some of us may be at one level, some may be at another level. But if you keep it, you know, you keep it down, you just make it plain and simple. Because what they this lesson is talking to us now just as much as it was talking to the Israelites. Amen. And so, and, so and, and I try to do the best I can that people understand. Like I said, the older we get, you know, kind of get a little bit slower than perhaps that many of you you would be. But nevertheless, I just keep on doing whatever I can do, whatever the Lord allows me to do, until. Until I can't do it no more. And then it's over. Mm-hmm. So, are there any other comments? Well, Sister Nancy, you see me every Sunday that I'm up here and I'm listening. And I hate when I got to go out there to the youth, but I know the youth need a system too. But I right. thank you for seeing me. Thank you for seeing me. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Are there any other comments? If there, if there aren't any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today.